Hey guys, it's Greg from Bitgoblin again, and today we're going to take a look at the Brave web browser. In case you haven't heard of it, basically it's an open source web browser with built-in ad and tracker blocking technologies in an effort to keep your activities private online. There are some other cool things that Brave does, so strap in, strap on, and brace yourself. It's going to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> you smell that? It smells like a Bitgoblin. Real quick, before we actually start looking at Brave, let's quickly go over the main selling points as to why you'd actually want to use Brave over other browsers. Who doesn't love a good old marketing pitch, am I right? Thankfully, they have this cute little Why Brave comparison page when they compare their browsers to Chrome. I was a little taken aback by not having comparison pages for like Firefox or Safari, but Chrome being the most popular browsers these days, it makes sense to focus your marketing on Chrome users. Anyways, so the three main points they have are superior performance to Chrome, better privacy, and rewarding creators and users for using Brave. The performance and privacy points I think are rather obvious in that compared to a stock Chrome configuration, performance will inherently be better if you're not downloading and rendering all of the ads and trackers and other junk that honestly can eat up a lot of bandwidth and CPU usage. And privacy will be better by blocking ads since most ads these days do at least some sort of tracking since that's where the big money is. Targeting advertising, after all, is how Google got to be so freaking big. The third point here about rewarding creators is less obvious, so let's click on the link and dig a little bit deeper. This, for the most part, is referring to Brave's in-house ads that you can opt in for, or maybe opt out for, I'm not quite sure, but either way, you can choose to view Brave's ads in place of other ads that you're blocking from other sites. And in turn for this, Brave will reward you with their own in-house cryptocurrency BAT tokens. I guess it stands for a brave advertising token, but I'll just call them bats for now. The idea behind this is to give creators a chance to still make some money through ads, and Brave's curated ads will, in theory, be less intrusive and, I'm guessing, less about tracking you to sell your data, and of course also giving you the choice if you want to see ads at all or not. Personally, I like the idea behind this, but we'll get into that a little bit later. For now, let's finally take a look at Brave. So here we are at the welcome screen for Brave after installation. The installation process was actually pretty easy. Just go to brave.com, download it, run the installer, and you're good to go. And I would also like to mention that I have everything scaled up to 200% uh, display scaling. So if anything seems a little off, like it seems like in the little video preview for like Skip Welcome Tour, if anything seems off in, in terms of like scaling or sharpness, that's probably why. But anyways, Brave seems like a pretty standard browser at this point. You have your address bar, I'm guessing also a search bar here at the top in the middle. You have go back and forward buttons for history, a refresh the page button. You have your tab bar at the top. You can add new tabs, as you can see. And here's another point that I would like to bring up for Brave. So here at the new tab page, uh, you have little stats for all the tra trackers and stuff blocked, which to me is kind of neat. So let's go ahead as a demonstration. Let's go ahead and go to YouTube.com. We're all familiar with this. It loaded pretty quick. But as you can see here, it's already blocked five trackers, hasn't measured any, any bandwidth saved and saved us one second so far. Now what this is really getting at um, in terms of like bandwidth and time saved is more of like all the trackers and ads, all the assets that were blocked. Doesn't actually like, you know, speed up your time or anything, you know, can't really do that. But anyways, moving on from that, you know, obviously you got some time over here. No one cares about that. Over here on the right, you have some cryptocurrency stuff. The main thing that's being shown right now is the Brave Rewards which is the thing I was mentioning earlier with the BAT or BAT tokens. I'm glad that it's opt-in instead of opt-out. If, if you click start using rewards, you get just have a couple of numbers here where you have the total earnings so far this month and tips contributed to creators. Now, from my understanding, it doesn't contribute the BAT tokens directly to the websites. It's only for websites that have partnered with Brave. Now, let's see if I'm guessing right now ads are enabled. So I guess let's go ahead and search for Brave browser and let's just I don't know, go for, I guess, some sort of news article for it. Let's see, what's a cool website we can trust? I guess TechCrunch is good enough. We're definitely seeing some ads. Well, maybe not some ads, but they're like related articles. So after a little bit, I did end up getting a notification from Brave that I earned some BAT tokens, but I've earned myself 0 0.01 tokens so far. And tips and contributions this month, I guess that's a setting that we have to set. Oh, and also look at that. 51 trackers and ads blocked. 701 kilobytes of bandwidth saved and three seconds of time saved. I can actually see this being useful for mobile users or people with uh, data caps so that you're not wasting your bandwidth on, you know, useless ads that you don't really care about. Anyways, let's go to, I guess, not learn more. I guess let's go to settings and Brave Rewards. 
Let's see, we have ads turned on, auto contribute, contribute, auto contribute. Okay, so I guess by default it sets up auto contribute. From what I'm getting here from this auto contribute thing is that every month it determines how much time you've spent on the Brave verified websites, whatever that means. I'm guessing just partner websites, and then spreads out the BAT tokens you've earned through seeing their ads amongst those websites. So I'll be honest, I'm not entirely familiar with this whole BAT reward token system, but Brave have a nice article about it, about Brave rewards on their website. You can find a link to that in the in the video description below. And it, it should explain everything for how the system works. So just overall using the Brave browser seems pretty normal. You can type into a search into the address bar. Let's just say I want to search for the uh, little known guy known as Linus Tech Tips. You know, searching into the address bar, you know, doing all that kind of fun stuff. Oh, here's his website. You know, nice little search. You know, obviously I can type in an address like, like I did earlier with YouTube.com. Pretty common stuff per today's standards. Uh, honestly, I like I haven't really noticed too much of a, of a page speed up, just you know dropping all the trackers and stuff. But but then again, and normally in Firefox, I use uBlock Origin to block ads and trackers and stuff. So I guess I, sh I should also go through like the little welcome tour thing. You can import your bookmarks and settings from Mozilla. Two Firefox is interesting. Um, I'm gonna skip this for now. I'm not going to do that. Import so browse safe and safe and sound. Brave Shields. Okay, so this is talking about that ad blockers and stuff. Set default search engine. I already did this, but you can, you know, set it set your default search engine. Brave Rewards. Start using rewards. You already talked about this a little bit. So yeah, pretty standard stuff. You, you, it has, you know, you know, history and bookmarks. Got a downloads page. Go through extensions. All that kind of fun stuff. I would assume at this point, y'all know how to use a web browser. So, you know. So yeah, overall, as a browser, Brave seems pretty cool and does what you'd expect it to, but it still raises the question of why you should use this over any other browser. Well, over the years, the web has become more essential to our daily lives. For a lot of us, or even most of us, that's become our primary way to listen to music, check our email, and even watch videos. You're on YouTube right now, after all. And it's really important to make sure that the tool you're using to browse the web is performant enough to keep up with our tasks, properly maintained and secure, is extensible enough to support everything we need and or want, and for some of us, stylish enough to uh, keep the nerds in their place. At this point in time, though, most browsers that we use and know of are fast enough to do whatever we ask them to, whether it's rendering and handling one large tab or like 500 tabs at once. This leads us to looking at other differentiating points between the browsers, like is it open source if I care about it? Is it private enough? Am I comfortable with the company that backs it? All that kind of stuff. And Brave seems to mostly focus around privacy and like ad blocking and tracker blocking and stuff and doing so in a way that doesn't entirely demolish revenue sources for creators. Now for the privacy points, you may be thinking, I have nothing to hide, so I don't need privacy, or something around the lines of, oh, it's only my shopping history. But honestly, both of those thoughts kind of miss the point about privacy. Not only is it a right in the US for privacy from the government, think of it like this. Assuming you've driven a vehicle in your life, have you ever sped or gone over the speed limit? Technically speaking, even if it's generally considered okay to go five to 10 miles per hour over the limit, it's still illegal and you can still get pulled over for it. And it would suck if your car or something tracked you at all times when driving and you got a ticket mailed to you whenever that happened. Privacy in this instance gives you some leeway in how fast you go. You know, maybe you're late for work or have an emergency. So long as you don't cause an accident or drive by the police or a speed trap, God forbid, unless privacy would take away some of the control you have and give that to the government. Now, in the context of privacy from businesses, have you ever searched for something on like Google or viewed an article on Facebook or something? And then like all the ads you see for the next couple of days are about that topic you researched or that thing you've already bought. Isn't that kind of creepy? Well, all the tracking from these ads and everything else that you do is a way to kind of help persuade you in subtle ways to get you to buy something. Oh, you're already talking about buying a new graphics card? Well, here's a bunch of ads for different graphics cards. And to me, it's just creepy, you know? Now, other browsers do do a better job than, say, Chrome about privacy. Firefox is well known for being open source, and Mozilla champions that whole save the internet, protect your privacy underdog stance, which is great. Except Firefox does do some tracking by default, and Mozilla have had their own snafus in the past. So I can understand you may not want to trust Mozilla. There are also some other smaller browsers like Palemoon, which is another open source browser, this time based on an older version of Firefox focused around customization. And they also take pride in not tracking their users. They mentioned this on their homepage after all. And again, it's open source, so you can poke around there if you want. Anyways, that became a bit of a rant about privacy and in the interest of moving on and getting back to Brave, 
go check out Brave on your own and let me know what you think of it in the comments below. To me, Brave seems like a solid browser that checks a lot of boxes for me by being open source, seems performant enough. It's based off of Chromium after all. The built-in ad blocker is very appealing for the more privacy conscious folks. And you know, blocking ads is pretty good in internet hygiene these days anyway. And the Brave reward system seems like a great way to support your creators if you're willing to put up with some in-house curated ads through Brave. Though ultimately your choice of browser comes down to your own personal set of preferences and priorities when it comes to performance, privacy, look and feel, all of that junk. And there really is no best browser for all. Personally, I'll be sticking with Firefox for my daily browsing needs due to my familiarity with it. But I think Brave has moved itself into my number two backup browser spot. Anyways, hit the like button and subscribe if you liked it or hit the thumbs down button if you didn't. And as always, feel free to leave me some feedback and suggestions if you're so inclined or simply just yell at me in the comments if you, if you think I'm stupid or something. Don't forget to head on over to the BitGoblin Discord server and join the conversation, and I will catch you in the next one.